Throughout the years, there's been countless JRPGs and RPGs that I've played, so many different stories that I've been invested in, so many great characters, so many different worlds that I've been a part of, but there's only been a handful of games that stick out as truly memorable. So now that the Grandia HD collection has finally been made available for PlayStation owners, does Grandia 1 and 2 stack up as one of those memorable adventures? Well, I figured it was time to let you know what to expect and if you should buy the collection. So yeah, in today's video, we're taking a look at the Grandia HD collection for PlayStation. Should you buy it? Is it worth your money? Is it worth your time? We're going to find out. And before we do, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Over 93% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button. It actually does make a difference for smaller content creators like me. And leave a comment down below. Have you played the HD collection on PlayStation or any other platform? What do you think? I do also want to give a special shout out and thank you to Gung Ho Online Entertainment America for providing me with the review code for today's video for Grandia HD collection. So without further ado, let's talk about these games. Grandia 1, which was originally released on the Sega Saturn and then later on the PlayStation 1, begins with Justin, a spirited and ambitious adventurer living in the port town of Parm. He dreams of becoming an adventurer like his father who vanished years ago on an adventure, and his mother is worried that he will try to follow in her late husband's footsteps. Justin's curiosity for adventure is fueled by his certainty that there's more to the world out there than what's already been discovered. See, the thing is, there's this giant stone wall called the end of the world, and the perception is, is that there's nothing beyond it. Justin is obsessed with the idea of reaching the end of the world, and it is said to be the ultimate destination for adventurers, holding untold treasures and ancient secrets. Grandia 1 is a whimsical Saturday morning cartoon feel of a game. Super lighthearted for most of it, but you know, some serious moments along the way. And we also have Grandia 2 here in the HD collection, which was originally released on the Dreamcast and then later on the PlayStation 2. This game follows Ryudo, a skilled mercenary and geohound who is hired to protect Elena, a songstress of Granus, on her pilgrimage to seal away the body parts of Valmar, the evil god. However, things take a dark turn when she is possessed by a piece of Valmar, and Ryudo is tasked with helping her purify herself and stop the resurrection of this evil god. Grandia 2 is the more serious in tone of the two, allowing for some more mature themes and concepts to shine through, giving you a nice contrast to the first game. And as a side note, if you're a fan of Final Fantasy X, you probably like this game as well, because it's kind of similar thematically. Now, driving this epic adventure is this timeless battle system that everybody seems to talk about. So the battle system in Grandia 1 and 2 combines turn-based and real-time elements, creating an engaging and strategic experience that I honestly haven't found in any other game. The core of Grandia's battle system revolves around the initiative bar or the IP bar, which represents the order in which characters and enemies take their turns. Each character character and enemy has their own icon on the bar which moves from left to right as time progresses. Unlike traditional turn-based RPGs, actions in Grandia 1 and 2 are executed based on the character's position on the initiative bar. Characters can perform various actions such as attacking, skills, items, but they must wait until their turn reaches the command phase. Now the most distinctive features of Grandia 1 and 2's battle system is the ability to interrupt and cancel enemy actions. By attacking or using certain skills on an enemy while they're in the prepare phase, players can delay or cancel the enemy attacks. This alone is what really sold me on this battle system because players must carefully time their actions to disrupt the enemy plans. It just has this extra layer of urgency to it, but you can manipulate that battle system really well. Battles are triggered by seeing monsters on the field, or if you run into one, giving you a preemptive strike, of course. I found most battles to be much faster paced than your typical turn-based game, allowing for exploration to kind of flow really quickly. Now, Grandia 1 and 2's battle system honestly really should be praised for its blend of real-time and turn-based mechanics. The strategic depth of canceling and combos and the interplay between the character and enemies on the initiative bar, these elements come together to create a dynamic and engaging combat experience that honestly really sets Grandia 1 and 2 apart from more traditional JRPGs, for example. Now, this is one of my favorite parts to talk about when it comes to Grandia 1 and 2. It's the music. The music in these games has so much charm to it. If you play games in hopes of being able to enjoy the music as well as the gameplay and the story, the Grandia HD collection has you covered. Grandia 1 and 2 features some of the most memorable and well-crafted soundtracks that enhance the gameplay experience and contribute to the overall immersion of the games and is easily, like I said, one of the most standout aspects of the games here. Showcasing composer Noriyuki Iridari's talent and ability to create memorable and evocative compositions. 
some HD re-releases or collections or remasters or whatever tend to tweak the music when they get re-released and thankfully that's not the case here. The original tracks have a load of charm to them so I'm glad they were just left intact as is because they really lift these games up just to the next level. Now, if we want to get into the downsides of the collection, I guess, you know, there's not much more here than just the games, which for me is okay. But if you're like a diehard Grandia fan, you might have been wishing for a bit more. I will say that the updated visuals, you know, in comparison to the originals go a long way, especially considering my first time playing Grandia was on a PSP Go a couple of years ago. So yeah, not too hard to get better than that. Speaking of the visuals though, some of the cutscenes actually don't really look good. Take a look at the opening of Grandia 2, for example. Now I'm not an expert on these kind of things, but I guess they didn't have the original source files to work with. Even then, could these have been upscaled in a way? Maybe they were and they just didn't clean up well enough. I don't know, it's weird, but it's actually kind of hard to look at. If you're a fan of Grandia 1 and 2, other than being able to play these games now on PlayStation 4 and 5, that might be the only selling point as the collection actually doesn't offer more than that. The best way to look at it is that this is the most accessible way to play some of the best JRPGs ever made without spending tons of money on the originals. In saying that, playing the originals on the original hardware with a CRT or whatever is still probably the best way to play these games. I'm all for experiencing these old school games the way that they were intended to be played. Now, some may argue that this re-release or the HD collection with a price tag of 40 US might be too steep, but considering if you split it down the middle, you pay $20 per game, either with you know, 30, 40 hours playtime, either way for both games, I'd argue that it's actually well worth it, but maybe not the definitive way to play Grandia 1 and 2. If you enjoy JRPGs with memorable characters, great music, awesome stories, great environments, and an incredible battle system, I highly recommend the Grandia HD collection for PlayStation. But if you are diehard Grandia fans, other than wanting to play these games again or having them accessible on your modern consoles, there might not actually be really much appeal here for you. Again, not to say that that's a bad thing, but there's just nothing new here in the collection. There's not even any like digital art scans or anything like that or behind the scenes. It's just straight up ports of one and two, which I don't mind. But somebody out there watching this might be like, ah, oh, for 40 bucks, you know, wish we could have gotten a bit more. But hey, I'll leave that up to you to decide. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the playlist to see some more of my videos and we'll see you another time for some more JRPG related content. Ta-da!